Sonara today is actually two funds, one of which is called Sonara Ventures. This is uh, where we started seven years ago as a joint venture of Philips and Teva, actually. It's a VC incubator looking to tap into the, uh, the innovation landscape in Israel on digital health medical devices and bioconvergence, which we can elaborate. Basically, um, we have now 20 companies within the portfolio, and we just launched six, seven months ago the new fund called Sonara Capital which is a follow-up fund uh, looking to invest, then again, in mostly in digital health technologies as well as in bioconvergence, um, like post-incubation, A rounds, B rounds, in Israeli and Israeli-related technologies. Um, aside from that, I've been the chairman of the Life Science Board in the Israeli Export Institute. This is kind of an extension of the Ministry of Economy in Israel. So I've been um, promoting for the last five years uh, almost $9 billion of life science export out of Israel. Prior to that, I've been helping the World Bank, the venture capital team of the IFC in Israel. So I've been involved in a lot of healthcare innovation globally with governments, corporates, and mostly startup companies. Yep. Israel has close to 2,000 life science companies, which is quite big. I mean, and this is a part of it. Uh, when we are looking into digital health, which is a very big focus for us in, in Sanara and regardless on behalf of the Israeli government as well, we have between 500 companies to 600 companies about a third of the life science companies, a lot of Israeli uh, serial entrepreneurs from the Israeli high tech known as the startup nation, you know, moved into healthcare and building up platforms, innovation platforms and solutions now because they want to make some impact on that. So about a third of those companies uh, and definitely a, an amazing source for deal flow for us as venture capitalists looking into those deal flows. I can mention a few, you know, that became unicorns by now, K-Health. Uh, AA Doc, a company that just raised $110 million, which they want to define themselves as the, as the intelligence component for hospitals with basically an image analytics technology company. Then again, on the um, decision supporting system, Viz AI, which is $1.4 billion selling, both of those companies are actually selling to over 1,000 hospitals in, uh, across the, the US and, and other places. One of our own companies actually out of Sanara Ventures as well as in Sanara Capital is a company called Taylor Med. Um, a financial navigation software to providers in the U.S. mostly to uh, basically allow the out-of-pocket out optimization for cancer patients and other chronic disease patients. So we've been seeing solution either from Sanara or other, you know, other companies out of Israel that basically addressing global needs, understanding the product market fit, talking to a lot of players, uh, not necessarily addressing the Israeli market for that matter. We are quite strong on the innovation side. But it's up to us as investors, and we do also in Sanaa, we have a quite an amazing, I would say, advisory board of over 100 people, all the way from San Diego to, to Tokyo, all the way from you know, India to, to the NHS in Europe. Uh, people who we talk to with our companies, people who address those uh, you know, concept understanding that we do not need to work in silos anymore. The healthcare industry should not work in silos as much as we can just, just to save people's lives, but not only that, you know, to help the, the, the costs related to, to, and the paradigm shift, which has been made because of the pandemic and maybe even before that with digital health getting in. So part of this ecosystem is actually the integration of tremendous amounts of technologies from digital components, from the bioconvergence component into a very kind of um, integrated ecosystem that talks to global ecosystem, other ecosystem, and know how to deploy solutions globally. First, when we started seven years ago with Sonara Ventures, we had Philips and Teva, and we did invest in technologies which might be synergistic to either Philips, either to Teva. So for that matter, could be anything that's related to drug delivery, CNS-related, you know, degenerative diseases related to, to Teva for, for that matter. And Philips, obviously, anything that has to do with monitoring, anything that has to do uh, with imaging, obviously, and connected care. But not just that, we've invested in companies. One of our investments, for instance, is purely for financial returns. We have quite a few of those companies. There's a company called Nanodrops, which you and I just spoke about. These are drops in your eyes to replace lenses and glasses. We have companies for brain aneurysm to treat a whole new disruptive way to treat brain aneurysm, like a one and done process. And we have some very interesting uh, digital health companies as well, like those that I've mentioned, some stroke-related companies, which we invested on behalf of the fund, the follow-up fund, a company for uh, stroke detection called CV8 which is basically looking into prior to a CT scan in the ER, you can look into an app and just a nurse can talk to a patient who might be sitting there in the ER, not being treated on time. And you have, as you know, stroke time is brain. You have to treat the brain in three and a half hours. 
So those, uh, eventually those solutions will be the gold standard in the next few years, yeah. whether we like it or not. Right. This is a train that left the station. I, 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 I insist on that. And as such, part of what we do is not only looking into disruptive technologies, which is a must do for any VC, you know, but we are looking into and many questions, and this is why I've been assisted by some venture partners, global venture partners that we have, or this advisory board, is understanding the business model. Because many of those companies actually have, not just in Israel, have some hard time to scale. Mm -hmm. This is a major, major issue. And what we are trying to do, it's not always like a spontaneous solution, just do that and do that and everything is okay. Right. Nonetheless, we're trying to, to put the effort on, you know, how to make sure that the, the technologies and the team and whatever is generic in, in criteria of VCs to invest in. But aside from that, look into the business model, dive into the bits and bytes of the true needs. And in some cases, we are forcing so-called the companies to pivot and look for a different use case. Even if though they may have started with one, they do need to shift and listen carefully. By the way, Israelis in some cases do not listen so much something that I keep on telling them, those that I meet, we, we are always on a selling mode, which we do quite well, yeah. but we need to listen and listen and listen carefully to the market and adjust accordingly to the market needs. Well, exactly, exactly. This is why even, even prior to whatever is happening on the capital markets these days, I've been saying, and even now I'm saying, you know, capital itself is almost a commodity. There's, there's enough capital, which might be more strict now and might, you know, valuations may go down, which is a good opportunity for VCs to invest. This is a perfect opportunity for us. We've been looking into companies, by the way, you know, $50 million pre-money valuation just because with no revenues, now they're going to be at 20. So for us as VCs, this is a good opportunity to deploy our capital. But nonetheless, basically, um, aside from the fact of, you know, how efficient that capital might be, um, we need to look closely into uh, various um, channels to, to scale and look into the, the, the appropriate business model and the paradigm shift which has been made to value-based medicine and to other uh, changes that are taking place globally now. So on that sense, when we, you know, if, if capital is a commodity, how can we as a team, as a venture capital team, help our companies, you know, make sure that they fine tune to those market opportunities. As I said before, capital could be deployed in a such and such way, either efficient or inefficient, but nonetheless, it is the milestone that should be addressed accordingly and bring a company to the, you know, it's like a marathon. You have right. those ups and downs, you need to go the full Monty, yeah. and make sure that you get into the stadium, and not only that, you have to make the last round to win. Yeah. So, so it's it's the, the bits and game. bytes. Yeah. It's the bits and bytes of the long game. Typically, typically we're looking into a rounds, kind of post incubation companies that have proven their technologies, or at least closer to the market or to commercialization, and just before a, a, like a tipping point. Typically, you know, companies, regardless of what's happening these days, you know, it could be twenty million dollar, and and just before they become eighty or hundred million dollar, this is a tipping point which we would like to invest in. So either digital health related or devices related or bioconvergence. In that sense, in terms of the timeline, bioconvergence means biology and physics, biology and tech, like computational biology, biology and chemistry. Those combination, the multidisciplinary approach of those technologies and entrepreneurs actually brings about the most destructive solution that you can think of. I agree. So what this is this is amazing, amazing to see. They may take a little bit longer, yeah. but happen to be, going back to your question, in some cases, the giants, you know, the Metronics of the world, the J&J &J of the world, do buy, in some cases, those companies in an earlier stage than they typically would have done so a few years ago, just because of the depth of technologies and the disruption that those companies bring to the marketplace. Yeah. So nanodrops, the drops in your eyes, actually, uh, that replacing lenses and glasses, this is actually starting with a laser flash that creates an imprint on your cornea, just on your cornea. It doesn't hurt. You know, it's like an itch uh, process, itching process. But basically, then we put the drops. So the laser is the physics. The drops are the biology components. And then you, there you go. You have a solution that where you may get rid of these once and, and for all. Disrupting two different markets. Yeah, you would go to CVS Optics. You would go into Walmart Optics. You put some drops every month or so, hopefully, and you get rid of your glasses and lenses. Another company is a company that we invested in called Sherman Diagnostic, which is like a PCR. Everybody knows what PCR are these days, so we're good. In that sense, there's no need to explain. But it, everybody knows as well that they do take like two, four, six hours, you know. We have invested in a company out of, the, out of the Hebrew University in Jerusalem called Sherman Diagnostic, which basically does the same thing in one or two minutes in any point of care. So any, you know, pathogens, 
bacteria, germs, whatever it may be, we can identify in a very cost-effective solution. And the last one, which is a bioconvergence, um, and that solution, by the way, came also from the disruption of physics and biology. And the last one is brain aneurysm. A company for that matter, which may totally disrupt the brain aneurysm, is a unique stent, a company called Lucid. It's a unique stent that goes into the brain. And, and then again, with some physics related to that in the second stage, may thicken in the blood vessels in order to shut down once and done, like a uh, one and done process, the, the neck of the brain aneurysm. So it may sound like science fiction, how we do that, which is quite, quite there, but there's been a great support of some of the world's most prestigious clinicians supporting each and every company that we invest in. Part of building those assets, advisory board around each and every startup that we invest in is, is one of the things that I'm doing when I'm, you know, traveling and talking to people. And well, venture capital within itself, it's a risk associated investment. I mean, there's no way to hide it, neither to put it away. Now, nonetheless, we have to, you know, to mitigate the risk in each and every investment. One of the things is obviously valuation. When the valuation were crazy up till two or three months ago, you know, going through a down round may kill a company eventually, may kill a company. Now we're lucky, we'll, you know, hopefully we shall see more reasonable uh, valuations within the companies that we invest in. Not only that, I think basically back in 2008, we had built the most disruptive companies. The best companies came out after the crisis by knowing that they need to focus by knowing that they don't have enough capital you know just just to deploy capital so they were right on the spot in terms of the milestone in terms of uh, you know the go-to-market lens very fastidious in each and every step of the way and, and and understanding and listening carefully to the use case what's the specific use case the first application that you would like to go to in terms of the go-to-market so actually the ecosystem now the atmosphere forces each and every one of us is, is to look carefully to solidify exactly where we are. And in some cases, you know, the, we, we may not be doing the right thing with some of those companies and maybe us as well. But I think the overall atmosphere, there's less room for mistakes. There's yeah. less abundance of capital. There's more efficiency. There's more efficiency psychologically. It's right. very, very important for us as investors to bring such entrepreneurs that, that understand that and we work together and within the next two or three, five years, some of those technologies will be gold standard across the world, not just in Israel, not just in the US. Some of those technologies will eventually be gold standard and best practices globally.